This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. This week I'm really excited to share with you some of the photography related things that I've been enjoying recently. I'm testing out a new enlarger, I've got a new video camera, and I'm really excited to also share some photography that's been inspiring me recently. So I wanna call this monthly favorites, but it's never been monthly. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this episode of Photography Favorites. I'm gonna start this one off with an enlarger for my dark room. And this was sent to me by Intrepid, which is the company that you might know for making affordable four x five cameras. They recently reached out to me and wanted to send me a prototype of an enlarger that they are releasing. So I was really excited to test this out. I set this enlarger up here on a copy stand made by a company called Negative Supply. Negative Supply makes equipment for scanning film with a DSLR, and this copy stand that they make happens to work perfectly with the Intrepid Enlarger. This was super simple to set up, it really took no time, and I think this is really the benefit of the Intrepid Enlarger. I spent the afternoon making a couple prints with it just to try it out. As you can see, setting up the Intrepid Enlarger is as easy as mounting it to a copy stand and attaching the controller. Then you can find a negative that you want to print and load it into one of their holders. Along with this setup, I would recommend you get one of these print developing tanks and this allows you to actually develop the prints in the chemistry. I'm pretty happy with the few prints that I spent the afternoon making. The borders that you see are because I didn't have a proper easel, but I actually don't mind the look of them. So I think the real benefit of the Intrepid Enlarger is the size and the fact that you can pack this thing up into a really small pouch or backpack and essentially store it away when you're not using it. That being said, after spending an afternoon making prints with it, I do think it kind of lacks the precision of one of these older, really expensive enlargers. There's a reason these things used to cost thousands of dollars, and I think it's because if you really wanna make a lot of prints repeatedly with consistent results, you need a level of precision that the Intrepid Enlarger doesn't have, I think. But if you're a hobbyist photographer who wants to try printmaking, you very occasionally want to do some darkroom stuff, but you don't necessarily want to commit to buying this massive, super heavy, vintage Enlarger, then I think the Intrepid one might be the one for you. That being said, I have a lot of respect for Intrepid for making a brand new product like this, and it was a lot of fun to use. So thank you, Intrepid for the prototype. The next thing I wanna talk about is actually a video camera and it's the camera that I'm filming on right now. This is the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I don't know if I'm breaking the rules around here talking about a digital camera, but I have just enjoyed using this camera so much. It's actually not even mine. I'm borrowing it from my friend Marty who's been filming a lot for the channel recently and this is the camera that he primarily uses. I've been borrowing one of his to film some stuff on my own time and I've just really enjoyed my time with it so much so that I'll definitely be picking up one of my own in the future. I originally got into photography because of video. I used to love making videos and since I've gotten into photography the inspiration to make videos hasn't really been there as much creatively I would say until I picked up this camera again. I think in the same way that Buying a film camera inspired me to sort of slow down with the photography process. Having like a manual focus video camera like the Blackmagic is equally inspiring creatively for a video. Previously, I was filming on this Sony a6600 and I could never get the colors to look right. The quality of the footage was never what I was looking for. I just never really loved shooting with this camera and I didn't realize it was the camera until I started using the Blackmagic. First of all, it's just the experience of shooting it. It has a massive screen. It's set up exclusively for video, whereas this kind of also has to do photography. 
and that gets in the way a lot of the time. The Blackmagic is so simple with the fact that it just does video. There's also just a huge screen on the back, super nice to use. And the thing I enjoy most about it is the colors. I can get so creative with the colors in post-production in a way that I didn't even realize was possible with video when I was using this Sony. There's just so much room to color grade, so much dynamic range that it almost reminds me a little bit of film because of the way the highlights and the shadows transition. Also the manual focus aspect of it is very new to me, but I think for video, it slows me down and just makes me think a little bit more about the shots that I'm gonna take because I have to think about the focus and I have to keep that in mind. So here's how the camera's rigged up right now. I have a Sigma 18 to 35, also Marty's lens. There's a monitor up there with an HDMI cable. There is a SSD to record to. Then there's the microphone receiver and I have this power thing plugged into my wall. So it basically has infinite battery life on the monitor and the camera. It's just super nice to have a video camera that's dedicated for video, not one that's also meant to do photography. Let's talk about some photography work that I've enjoyed recently. This is my favorite part of the video where I just get to share some books. And the first one is a book that I've owned for a very long time, but I keep coming back to it because it blows my mind every time. This is My Last Day at 17 by Doug Dubois. Over the course of five years, Doug basically photographed these teenagers in a small town in Ireland. The photos feel like they're kind of just documenting these kids' everyday lives in this small town in Ireland. They're incredibly detailed and layered compositions with so much going on in each frame. He has photos of these teenagers doing pretty much everything you can imagine throughout this town climbing a telephone pole, hanging out by the beach, and it just looks like this really beautiful way of looking into their lives. I think to some extent these photos are staged, but not in the way that a Crudson photo is staged, because these are real people who really live in these places that they're being photographed, and for that reason it still feels very documentary. I keep coming back to this book because it feels like a movie in the sense that it's almost like you're following these characters and they develop throughout the story. I also love how he just photographs the spirit of being a teenager and I think hence the title My Last Day at 17. Very beautiful book. I come back to this one all the time. The next project I want to talk about is actually a zine by my good friend Lauren Tepfer. It's a really beautiful collection of her work that documents growing up in suburbia as a teenager. I can always tell when I'm looking at one of Lauren's photos by the color palette. They're always so beautifully saturated and she seems to just find the most beautiful colors in everyday life, which is what fascinates me most about her work. I made a video about her and her work a couple years ago actually on the channel, so I'll link that in the description as well. It's a fun little throwback. That's all I have to share this week. Thank you so much for watching, and finally, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace is an incredible all-in-one website building platform that you can use to build your photography portfolio online. I've been using Squarespace for over three years at this point, and they've made it so incredibly easy to get a website up and running with my photography. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can hit the link in my description for a 14-day free trial of Squarespace, and when you're ready to launch, go to Squarespace squarespace.com slash Willem for 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thank you Squarespace for the continued support on this channel and thank you to you for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. I'll see you next week with another video. Peace.